struggling people are equal but they ain't evil enough of course more one more more force more law more war more more wars boy drop them 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 Hi, this is Liam Milan for Ask Audio, and today at the BPM show, we're talking to the mighty Icicle, drum and bass producer, amongst other uh, uh, influences as well and uh, genres. Um, I just we're, we're basically um, looking at a seminar today where he's using machinery in part of his live show. Um, we just want to start by, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your setup and, and kind of how it came to be? Uh, for the live show, um, well, basically for the live show, I use Machine Studio as the heart, um, so literally in standalone as well. So it's not a DAW or anything like that. I use a virus synthesizer, um, you know, just got a a big mixer just to mix it all out live. So Machine will send out different channels, drums, percussion, bass, things like that. Got the control keyboard as well, which is uh, great for the show. It just automatic automatically latches onto whichever instrument I'm sort of selecting and can play stuff over the top. Got some analog filters, compressors, things like that but basically it's like sort of a hardware studio um, kind of setup you know sort of mixing live kind of like what techno people used to do in the 90s still using machine studio you know it has it, it runs on a Mac mini without a screen no no mouse anything like that I've just sort of programmed it so that when you turn it on it just boots up properly and then you can just sort of use the controller for everything so you know just to kind of keep it hands on and make sure that nobody says is he just checking his email up there that's uh, yeah that's kind of it Cool. So, I mean, on the note of you saying in the style of like the 90s uh, techno performers and live performances, uh, who are your influences to kind of how you put your rig together? Because I've, I've seen Omen, Omen Tobin uh, pop up a few times when I've been reading up. Yeah, I mean, Omen Tobin is obviously definitely is a, is a big hero for me, but, you know, I would say for his sound design more than anything else, you know, just sort of the granular stuff that he's always been doing or Foley type stuff. Um, you know, very innovative with sound. You know, when it comes to this, though, I think it's more probably techno DJs. You know, Jeff Mills has always been a big hero of mine, and he, you know, he was just even when he's DJing, he's bringing out his uh, his 909. Um, and you know, you see a lot of sort of techno people as well. Now, maybe sort of out of the newer people recently. You know, for instance, Blau one, really nice tunes. I really like that kind of style. But you know, he just puts a bunch of machines on the stage and just plays live like that. And um, that's how I see what life is for the type of music that I make, the kind of electronic music that I make. You know, we're not a full-on jazz band, but that kind of sort of jamming type, you know, working with different uh, hardware and just, you know, live manipulating sounds, you know, that's what I, I see as live. So that's, I think, where my interpretation and influence came from. That's what I try to do with this show. Okay, so in terms of kind of your ability to have a dynamic control over your sets and maybe a little bit of improvisation, what what have you factored into your setup to give you a bit of expression rather than obviously it just kind of being stems and you really just letting it roll out? Um, well, I guess, you know, just to keep that flexibility is always hard because, you know, you got you, your tunes are made up of, of loads and loads of individual elements and you're going to have to pick out the ones that you really want to play with. Obviously, Machine is good for it because I will split my tunes, you know, most of the tunes I'm playing weren't actually made in Machine, they were made like with Cubase, you know, lots of NI stuff, and that's where, where Machine is great for me, because I will split all my tunes out in either little percussion loops or even individual elements or notes that I will load into the sampler so that I can play them up and down. But also, essentially, you know, I use FM8 a lot, I use Epson a lot, um, you know, lots of native instrument stuff, and then I can just load a patch in. So, you know, a lot of those synthesizers are live, and that means sort of fully palpable, you know, just do everything you want with it, change it. Um, and, you know, then there is, I guess, the structure in terms of, you know, how you're going to run through your stuff, you know, how are you going to structure out your songs. So within Machine, I just make 16 bar loops, or sometimes short, so I just let them run. and. You know, when you just sort of in the scene selection there, just go between the scene that you're in and then sort of go scene all, it will just run through again. And then you select the scene that you're in again, it will just keep that looping until you feel like you've done that part and you move on. So 
in that sense, I think you do have a lot of flexibility, you know, so I can just sort of control how fast I run through songs. I've got everything there. I'm playing melodies over the top. And then obviously the hardware side of it is where I am mixing percussion in and out on the hardware mixer. I've got different reverbs that are on the axis of the hardware mixer. So I just do my, my reverbs live, whatever. And then filtering, there's like a filter group on the mixer. So I can just send anything through an analog filter and just sort of filter stuff in and out. And that's kind of a, uh, yeah, I think pretty much the entire functionality of what I'm trying to do. How are you dealing with tempo? Um, well, tempo is a bit of a problem because machine would be great if it had like um, tempo specific loops, you know, scenes, and it doesn't. Just has one master tempo. But actually, because uh, I am switching through tempos, but what I do is I make little scenes of very simple bit of music, bit like a breakdown, but like sort of a loop that keeps running. You just hit tap on the machine and just start winding the tempo down. So you go ding, 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 ding. And then you just, when, you, when you've done, achieved sort of your tempo switch, you just let it go again. So yeah, that was a bit of an improvisation, but actually turned out to work really nicely in that sense. So I just actually have full control over, you know, just sort of moving up and down. And you can do it smoothly as well. So it's not like steps or anything like that. So that's about it. Cool, so it's, a, it's an AV show, right? So, and I've seen that you, you're quite involved in the, the visual side of it too. Can you briefly kind of explain the connection between your MIDI triggering, your use of Machina, and how that connects to whatever platform it is you're using for the visual side? Yeah, so basically it's via MIDI, like hard MIDI. You could have done, um, you know, OS X or some, uh, OSC or something like that, but we've just gone from MIDI and keep it simple. Um, and we use uh, Resolu Marina, which is, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with visual stuff, it's kind of like Ableton for, for visuals. Really. It just has like all these sort of these slots that you can chuck clips in and then you can trigger them. Um, now, for instance, if I play a melody, I will map every key on, on the keyboard that I'm playing to a specific piece of video and it will get triggered. So literally with just by hooking the computer up. Um, you know, already the visuals get triggered whenever I'm hitting the notes. So if I, for instance, there's a, there's a tune in there with a melody and every mel every note in the melody is a different sort of wide line on the screen over the top of the visuals that are going on. And if I play the melody differently or backwards or improvise with it, you see it just literally moving like that. So, you know, then there is sort of specific scenes or percussion loops that trigger layers of video. And we just sort of set it up. It was a lot of programming, but uh, to, to sort of work in in parallel to what I'm doing, literally. Then I still have a, a VJ who's there just to kind of apply some effects and some extra stuff. But essentially, it's all on the beat triggered by how my show progresses. And the media is just sent out through MIDI port one. And you know all the media information comes rolling out in Resolute Marina and knows what to do with it, basically. That's the uh, idea. Okay. Cool. So in terms of uh, where you're going in the future with the live show. Now, I, I interviewed Richie Horton quite a while back when I think it was the 2.0 tour. Um, and obviously it's a very big rig, um, very big team on board as well. Um, but the big kind of turning point for that version of the tour was that he said he'd gotten to the point where he can now create the music to work with the live setup. Whereas before, like, like you said yourself, you take, you're actually porting from a door through to the actual live setup. Can you see, or is there anything happening in terms of a reverse move from your live setup into the studio at the moment? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you're more mindful of that. Obviously, you do learn that, and then it becomes more of one thing, you know, like you're sort of looking at your music now uh, already, how, how am I going to present it? Also with the visuals, because a lot of the visuals now I'm making myself. So I am making a tune, I'm thinking about what it looks like, how I want the visuals to kind of match with it. And it becomes this one integrated sort of you know, audio-visual kind of product, which is really exciting. I think that's fairly, you know, of this time that people can sort of do that or even have like kind of, you know, the processing power at home to be able to do so many things. And, um, you know, so I think, yes, it become, it's become an integrated uh, process, you know, in that sense. I don't know, I mean, like, it is hard to do it all, though, just to kind of keep looking forward, just to see how your tunes will work in the live show with all of it. You know, sometimes you just need to sit down and write some music as well. But, you know, there's definitely ways of setting up your synths, of your patches, you know, the way you built your stuff. Is, and then you're thinking about how I can play with that, how I can sort of morph and evolve uh, the parts of this. This will be really fun to do live, basically, that kind of feeling. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, it's, it seems to be, for me, anyway, like, um, step forward, you know, from just making a tune, putting on a USB stick, pressing play, and then everybody's saying like, oh, it's a cool tune, you know, so it becomes a bit more comprehensive, I think, definitely.
Okay, to kind of, we're going to do some tech tips in a minute, but to, to sum up the live aspect, um, you're on generation two now of your live setup. Um, so, what would you advise for anyone who's actually either maybe already making music and looking to go live, or maybe even just looking at what am I going to do in the music scene? Maybe I'll just go down the live route. What's the kind of the, the biggest hurdle you'd, you'd give some tips for? I mean, you know, it's, it's, majorly exhausting you know i underestimate that with this tour as well we're traveling with three people three fly cases like 100 plus kilos of equipment you have to set it up you have to sound check so first of all you gotta know that you have the energy to do it you know you gotta you gotta really want to do it um in terms of you know obviously how, how you're gonna do that what kind of platform you're gonna you know you can go down say the ableton route which is maybe one of the most obvious ones and you can do sick stuff with it but i think one of the most important things and one of the um, you know, most heard bits of feedback that I get is like, oh, what are you really doing? You know, people don't understand. You can't really expect your crowd to understand how Ableton works and, um, and how you can tweak all your parameters in it. So, you know, for that reason, my setup is fairly, you know, hands-on. You, you could just see I'm doing stuff. It must be something cool, you know, even if you don't understand it, because, you know, you just don't want to look like you're checking your emails, I think. Um, so, you know, going live, Figuring out um, a platform in which you can be creative and musical is one thing, but also do it in a way that people can see that you are being that. You know, I think that's definitely important. Um, you know, just yeah, just actually show that you are adding something and you know more to your show than you would have done if you were just DJ. I think that's important to keep in mind. Yeah, some really good advice. Um, so tech tips briefly, right? What's your favorite feature of machine, or, so, or let's say the, the feature of machine that's kind of given you a new way of approaching what you do with your music? Ooh, it's a difficult one, I guess. You know, I mean, for me, just overall, what makes machine great for me is the fact that it's solid, the fact that I can put my cool patches in there, like go, go complicated, but go down to the core, the overview, things like that. I think one thing that's really good for live, maybe that just sort of springs to mind now, is the, the macro page where per group you know or per song or even in the master you set up a bunch of master effects and you just go through them really quickly and you can on you know you have eight encoders where you can just have like a stretch and a reverb and a delay and a filter or something you just be really expressive with that you know i think that's that's a really smart idea that they've basically added this sort of macro functionality where you don't have to go into all the details uh, but can actually be very live and just hands-on with it I mean, you know, if just picking out something like that, I, I, it's hard to say, but I think that's probably one of the things, definitely. Okay, and a slightly uh, personal point. You uh, mentioned in another interview you have uh, read about using isotope alloy as a, uh, I can't remember the exact terminology, but an incredibly good way of beefing up transients or working with transients in your drums. Can you explain a little bit about the mechanics of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, alloy is definitely a plugin I use a lot, um, and it has a transient shaper in it. Transient shapers are obviously not that unique. Everybody makes one these days. But what that has, it's a multiband. Uh, version so you can just um, I, I love this for just using almost entire loops or drum bass or something like that and you know you can just you, you you set up your bands to be you know like around about 180 hertz and then uh, the other one at maybe 2k and um, you can just beef up your snares a lot by just putting the attack transient up of the mids and um, you know your, your top transient like sort of the, the top band uh, your attack transient you don't have to push up as much so you can basically get achieve massive transients without get, getting way too much pop that seems to be the problem with normal transient shapes you always have this at the top but you can just control that and just have a go at it you know you'll just sort of see you go like I mean people have, have shown it's going like all right now it sounds like a modern drum and bass track and before it sounded like it was made in 2005 you know it's uh, definitely a very powerful transient shaper for me um, yeah definitely one of my favorite plugins <laughs> Excellent. Well, Icicle is about to go and scoot off and do his seminar at the um, the education booth, I think it is, it's termed. Um, so thank you very much. Um, this is Ask Audio. Get out. Get out.